Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Inside Arts by Artists Mega. Today I'm going back to the typical present for the Pablo Family Day. Let's go and see what that is all about. This is Lulega and this is Inside Arts by Art Roots. I am here with Eduardo at the Fabu Gessi Festival. I just have a question or two for him. Okay, can you give us the exact name of the event? Yes, yeah, so the, we have the Fabu Gessi African Digital Innovation Festival and today actually we're having a special event which is something we call Fabu Yoki, which is a karaoke concept oh, wow. but with the Fabu Gessi twist. Uh -huh. um, and we have a special family day, so lots of children with their parents, coming to sing karaoke, but also we have other activities like an animation workshop, like video game workshop, and also kind of digital puzzle workshop. So lots of activities for yeah. the kids too. And where did the idea come about to have such a festival? So the festival this year is 10 years old, so it was originally set up between VITS, Digital Arts, and the Tsimolopong Precinct, which is where we house uh, Bakugesi each yeah. year. And I think I mean, I wasn't part of it initially setting up, but I think the, the sense around it was that there was so much interest in African digital creative content at the time, that there was no festival in the country, or even in Africa at the time, that was kind of really bringing together those people to show the best of what was being done at yeah. the time. Okay, and I hear you saying African, so do we have um, creators from different continents of, the, of our continent? Yeah, so we... We're totally pan-African. Of course, when you do more community events, it's more local to Johannesburg. But in the festival, which usually happens in September, October, yeah. this year it's September 26th to the 1st of October, mm -hmm. we really invite a huge amount of people from across Africa. So artists, creators, mm -hmm. curators, producers. Mm -hmm. So it's really also, I think over the years, has become the meeting point each year yeah. for the kind of cutting edge digital creatives to meet okay. and, and to kind of come together and say, what have you been doing? Oh, I've been doing this. Oh, no, that's it. Yeah, you and know? people kind of learn from each other and, this, and the space gets bigger. Yeah. yeah. And then would you say from the time that it started, I know you just said you weren't involved from inception, but at the time that you've been involved up to now, has there been quite a lot of growth? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've, I wasn't involved in the organization, but I would always come to yeah. Bakke Gezi, so I've been coming for years. Mm -hmm. And you could, I mean, how it grows bit by bit yeah. each year. And I think last year was also quite a big milestone because, of course, COVID really affected the festival. Yeah. But the festival did really well, of course, because it's a digital festival. It actually did very well in 2020 because yeah. it, it was very ready to go online. Yeah. And then, of course, I think 2021, people, 
they were a bit scared of coming mm. in person. Yes. You know, it's, there was they a mic sure. on, mm. et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. And then I think last year, finally, that kind of ghost of COVID was mostly gone. Yeah. And people really wanted to meet again in yeah. person. So I think we also benefited from the right timing and that because people were desperate to just come to a real life event. So yeah, and I think this year being the 10 year anniversary, people are like also really excited to be part of that, to kind of celebrate the festival being a decade old. Okay, and who are the partners involved who are putting it together? So we, we always, we're part of Tamala Home Precincts where, where we have the festival. So it's run by Tamala so I'm, I'm an employee of Tamala Okay. But we continue, of course, uh, our major partner is VITS yeah. and the VITS uh, School of Digital Arts. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of core partners that make the festival work each year. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have amazing funders who help us. There's the AFD, which is um, French Industrial Development Support, oh. which really helps us to, to keep the, the festival as well as the other studios for animation and video games oh, alive. What is the AFD stand for? Um, Agence Francaise de Villemont, I oh, think. Okay. I hope I'm not um, <laughs> okay. butchering that. Uh -huh. And then we also work very closely with the GIZ. I definitely cannot say that, that okay. name, it's German. Uh -huh. So that's, that's like the, the French, the, the German equivalent of the French uh, mm -hmm. partner. And they've also been working with us many, for many years particularly in helping to create that kind of connection across Africa yeah. with something that we call intermediaries, which is, I would say, if you think about creators, most people know creators, the, the things they do. Intermediaries are like the next layer of people that make the creative industry work. So yeah. curators and producers and agents. And one of the things we found through the research is that this area is not so developed across Africa and it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening if you don't have those people is yeah. creators get taken advantage of, yes. there's very kind of short term growth of the industry and then it kind of collapses and grows again. Yeah. So we've been putting a lot of research and effort into really looking at what that intermediary space is doing across Africa. Yeah. Last year we brought 50 intermediaries from across Africa to Papagezi. This yeah. year similarly we're doing something like that and we're also going to launch a special platform specifically for these intermediaries because there's a lot of stuff for creators but very little that that talks about what these people do in their roles and lastly and you just mentioned that the next one is in september what can people look forward to what should why should they get out of home and come to I mean, we showed like some of the, the most interesting digital showcases like in town or across the continent, I yeah. would say. So really things you would not be able to see anywhere else. So from VR showcases to digital like installations yeah. with artists, like special commissions. Mm -hmm. There's speakers who come from across the continent and the world during our conference. So I think also this year we've tried to kind of make it it's just shorter than a week, it's six days, okay. it's really packed. Mm -hmm. um, so every day has its own kind of level of interest. One thing we realized last year was that families are really desperate for, for activities, but also to start getting their children understanding the landscape yeah. of digital creativity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was something that really surprised us last year, our family day, mm -hmm. I mean, it was totally packed. We had to stop actually letting people in because we were completely like fully booked, yeah. so that's just why we're doing this family day okay. by Yoki, mm -hmm. and we're planning a big level up for the family day this year, which will be the last day of the festival, the yeah. Sunday, will be a massive like digital creative mini festival just for family. All right, then. looking forward. To it. Thank you so much for your time and all of the best. Tell us about your involvement here today. My involvement here, so as part of the STEM program, STEM program, I come from the talking dictionary world, the digital space, okay. the fun side of learning, you know. Mm. And I met Corbano at the guy behind Orca Designs at NYDA. Okay. And he was interested in what I do with kids. I was like, hey man, I design stuff. I'm like, oh, design stuff for me. Yeah. And then they designed my first 3D, uh, 3D, um, what do you say, cartoon? Yeah. Because ultimately, Miss Ruben has to be a Barbie doll. Yes. I want the vinyl mm -hmm. doll myself. Yeah. She needs to have an image, yeah. She needs to have an image, but you'll never see it in your face now. <laughs> so you'll just see the cartoon. Nobody's ever seen Barbie. Yeah. So that's how I actually collaborate and just be one family. You know? So
especially because we're both passionate, we're all passionate about developing kids. Yeah. So my passion started in 2014. I was a student, I studied something so different. I studied export. I, I kid you not, I studied export. <laughs> and yeah, from a family where everyone is a teacher, from my mom to my uncle to my dad. Mm -hmm. Everyone at home is a Miss Robots. Robot. Okay, where does that come from? Tell us about Miss Robots. Miss Robots, it was 2014. These kids bumped into me and they're like, Yo, hi, I'm seeing. Who can I hurry? Why not? Oh, okay. 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 Get out. And it's rude. No way. In 2014, these kids get me. I don't even know the kid. I and at that time, were you already in this um, sector? Not really. I was a student studying. And what? He was showing me flames. They I spoke was, it into the universe for you, girl. They spoke it into the universe and it grew. And I was like, actually, I'm very colorful. I've got a colorful personality. I love kids. I love... Look, I'm just in the education sector. Uh -huh. And me teaching kids has always been a thing. And it all started with helping kids with their homework and putting kids who are going to multiracial schools and those who are in schools in the townships together, making them one. Because one thing I've realized is, I speak for myself. When I was in primary school, I did I stay fit. Mm -hmm. So already public speaking was already enriched in me at a young age. Yes. But you get to a child who goes to a, <clears throat> a school in the township, they don't know what I stay fit is. Mm -hmm. They shy to speak in front of people. True. So I was like, actually, no, do a poem about yourself. Right? Like, start doing Teachers. I started teaching them homeworks, mm. and then I went as far as having a chess club. I had a tennis club, reduced my injuries. I couldn't continue, and I realized that parents want to be spoon fed. Yeah. You know, I bought rackets, I bought tennis balls, I paid a coach, but they wouldn't take their kids to the actual tennis court for them to play tennis. Mm. And then it started, and I was like, okay, what am I going to do? First things first, I designed a book, mm -hmm. which is what I call the robotical learning program. No, this is a talking dictionary. Okay, we'll this get is, to that. Part of it. Okay. I started with a robotical learning program. Okay. And I decided I designed a curriculum uh -huh. that I wanted kids to learn at kindergarten, at crash. Yeah. I'm still in the process of getting it approved. Okay. So my vision, my plan is to have my own Montessori, but the African way, the Wadakan Academy. Yes. Way in the house. Teaching the African child the African way. 100. Mm -hmm. uh, so I designed my own robotical curriculum. Yeah. I started writing animation. I have a book on Amazon called Zentaki of the Gymnast. What? I have another book that's still in the process and it's called Phoebe. No, it's called the Phoenix Book. I don't okay. know what Phoenix is <laughs> for. Opening my own animation studio right now, like a workstation, yeah. Because I want to tell kids' stories via animation, and I've merged all African countries through animation because I've met kids from Nigeria, I've met kids from Zimbabwe, mm. I've met kids from, I've met adopted kids. Mm. So those stories come to me, but it's not in human form. Okay. I have a friend, her name is Rabatle. Yeah. Rabatle gave herself a name. So to be part of the robotical clan, mm -hmm. we can't use a real name. Yes, my name is Rabatle to say it's all Mudis, raised by Mugunyanis, yes. vice versa, but I'm this robot. Where do you find these kids? Kids find me. Uh -huh. I attract kids. Okay. You know? And some, it, it's, so, it's so inevitable. Like, I will talk to kids and then the parents will ask, how do you do it with my child? Mm. Yeah. Let me help your child. You actually said something important where you said, I come in the fun side of learning. Yes. How important do you think that is, especially for parents? Because we are 80s kids, meaning, Tina, we were told to go to Ufunda Kanji, this is the only way. Why do you think it's also important to have the fun side of learning? Because not everyone is academically inclined, number one. Yeah. Number two, dealing with kids living with disabilities, I've realized that we all think taking them to, through the academia route is what they're supposed to do. That's why we've got karaoke. Yeah. Because one could be an amazing singer, an amazing yeah. performer. Mm -hmm. I know I was dealing with a child who was cerebral palsy, mm -hmm. and he couldn't, even now, I think now he's 26, yeah. he couldn't write his name. So he, his motor skills were, yeah. not, were not done. And I was mm -hmm. like, um, I gave him my guitar. I bought a guitar and I gave him my guitar. Yeah. And only then it registered to their parents, actually this guy likes music. 
Now he plays imagine, piano. Imagine so, had they known that when he was young. If they had known that when he was young, he would be Aww. he would be something else. Mm. You know? So I've always tapped into something. I've always been a child advocate. Let me speak for it. Yeah. Let me show you what they actually like. They enjoy it. Every child enjoys playing. Yeah. So I teach through games. Yeah. Love games it. make them better. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about you have on your hand. It's my talking dictionary. <laughs> this was done about, what year is it? Maybe five years ago. My only setback with this is the production. Mm. It's quite costly to make. Okay. Uh, it's got eight languages. South African, right? All no. South African languages, except one is an Asian language, it's Mandarin. Oh, wow. So it's got Mandarin on it. Mm. And what it basically does, so this is the pen. Yes. You switch on the pen, right? Please tell me you're not flat. Because if you're flat, okay. what's oh. going on? <laughs> okay, so mm. you're gonna actually uh, choose the language you want. So we'll start with my home language, Sutu. Yes. It must be. Right? And then you go to any word that you want to learn in that language. So let's go to window. That's yeah, when? <laughs> no way. Yes. And we go to province. Is it on? Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to choose another language. Uh, we'll go to Isuzu. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to go random. That's the sun, so in Zulu it's Ilaga. That cycle. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know what you mean. What? Okay, now let's talk about the production behind this because I can understand why you're saying it's it is costly. costly. It's very costly. First so of all, what is that? Thing, the little thing. Describe it. Describe the buttons on it. So, this is the pen, yeah. right? The talking dictionary pen. This is the on button. Uh huh. And this is the increasing of the volume, take it up, take it down, and just have it moderate. Oh my goodness, you came up with all this. I was with a friend when we came up with this together. My goodness. Yeah. So what are the chapters in the book? How did you get to put the book together? It's just random things, right. like everyday things. Mm -hmm. Tree, building, earth, cycle, music. Music, you know, sport, anything, us, yeah. Everything, like stuff that you'd like to learn. Like yeah. what is yellow? Yeah. A certain language. language. Oh my goodness. That's basically how it all came about. And there's like a little chip obviously here. Yeah. You know, that helps you decide which language you want. Mm. And yeah, man, technology is the way. That's it is the way to go. Out. And then where, what are you hoping, where would you like to see this book go? I'd like to see this book go in every school, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. If parents can't afford it, then every school should have this because you'd be in class and you're asking a teacher, what is this in Zulu? They don't know. Mm. I've been trying to sell it to the department. Okay. And they're taking me back and forth and so forth. Yeah. But if the private sector takes it, then great. I more investments. I want this book at exclusive books. Yes. I want this book. Show it nicely on the camera, girl. Bring the pen next to it. My goodness. And then lastly, ch children from what age can read it? Are you targeting like crash or do you think so good my guinea pig mm. is two years old. Huh? My guinea pig is two years old. No way. He, it's unfortunate today he didn't come, but yeah. I found this young boy who wears spectacles and he would speak in the building or whatever. I'm like, actually, I'm going to use this bit. My actually, goodness. Actually, most kids I start with from two years old. Yeah. And I love the fact that it's teaching him um, our own languages because Sana, we don't. We don't, don't, we don't speak our language no, at home. Who's, who's who? But Tommy, oh, no, no. I'm one of them. Oh, my parents, my, my kids, darling, we are closer in Sutu. My husband in Sutu, I'm closer. But I'm going to Sana, by Kumsha. I'm going to teach you, Tommy. I'm no. I'm buying that. Thank you so much for your time, Sissy. But I need an episode on my YouTube channel just for you. Yes, I caught you here today, but this needs an entire episode just for you. More like my program needs a whole episode so that you guys can know about my curriculum. Yes. That I am teaching kids alphabet or phoenix through syllables. It's not A for Apple, it's A for and or play. That's the future. Thank you.
Thank you.